Do not let people tell you that 2022 free agency sucks. Oh, the best free agent, Zach Levine. No, he's not. He's not even number one on my top 10. And beyond the names, this summer is going to be super dramatic. For example, remember how James Harden opted into his one year when the Sixers traded for him? Actually, he didn't. And the Sixers are like, oh, that was such a busy day. He'll get that paperwork done soon. Are you sure? Have you seen this guy's decision making the last three years? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? God damn it. What do you want? I have to go. He could go. Kyrie could go from Brooklyn. But before we get to the top 10 free agents, we have to look at who is extension eligible. Because if these guys don't sign in the summer, it's a big deal. They could be thinking about leaving. And it's a huge list. My God, look at those big names. Seriously, look up and down this list. I fully expect Nikola Jokic to sign his Supermax extension, you know, for a quarter billion dollars. I also think John Morant will get the max. And there are a lot of names that we could talk about on this list. But there are two that I want to hone in on. That's Damian Lillard and Zion Williamson. Will the Blazers offer Dame the max? It's just two years, 107 million, but do they want to be paying a 33-year-old dame over $50 million? According to Woj, maybe not. Among several top-level GM candidates, there's no enthusiasm to Grant Lillard his massive extension. In fact, several executives told ESPN they would be far more interested in the Blazers' job with ownership's blessing to move Lillard sooner than later. Oh, really? That is exactly what will happen if the Blazers strike out this summer. Summer. It's the most important offseason in team history. Either they recruit all-star talent to pair with Dame, or they're going to trade Dame. What about Zion? The most he can get is five years, $182 million from the Pelicans, but are they definitely going to offer that to him? He's missed 62% of the game since he's been drafted. When he plays, he looks great, but he's never healthy. And there are red flags that you don't want to be there anyway. We have seen so many dudes get the bag and then demand a trade. Anthony Davis, Paul George, Ben Simmons. What if the Pels think Zion could just do that to us? So we're not going to offer him the max? Well, he would probably say, all right, no, I'll take less than the max. Psych! And if he doesn't sign the extension, he is as good as gone. So all that could happen this summer. So when people say, oh, free agency sucks, they're not looking at the big picture. But this is about free agency. And before we get to the top 10, who's got cap space to sign these guys? This is the 2022 cap space rankings. Keep in mind, a max contract costs anywhere from 35 million to 42 million this summer. The Blazers could have the most space at 60 million if they renounce guys like Anthony Simons. I don't expect that to happen probably be more like 21 million next is the wizards at 35 plus million if bradley beal doesn't return then the pistons with a possible 33 million if they don't pick up team options then the spurs if lonnie walker doesn't return they'll have about 30 million bucks the Magic will have around 26 million. The Pacers, 23 million. The Grizzlies, 20 million if Tyus Jones and Slow Mo don't return. And the Rockets, they're kind of a wild card if they move John Wall. So does that mean the best free agents are gonna go to the Blazers or the Pistons or the Spurs because they have space? No, even if you don't have cap space, you can always sign and trade. We see it every off season. The Heat didn't have money in 2019. They still got Jimmy Butler. Last off season, they still got Kyle Lowry. The other tool for a non-max player is the mid-level exception. We hear about it every year. It's not that complicated. This is a list of who can afford the big $10.3 million deal. And this is a list of who can afford the smaller $6.3 million deal. Remember these teams when we get to free agents seven through 10. But let's start at number one, Bradley Beal. He's not perfect, but at least he is loyal. He is an all-star when healthy, and he's 28 years old. Whoever signs him outside of DC will give him a four-year contract. Those are prime years for Beal, and he has playoff experience. He's not a number one option, but if a team needs an elite number two, I think he's a great fit. I think if he wants to leave the Wizards, the Mavericks, the Lakers, the Blazers, and the Celtics should be aggressive. Most likely he'll re-sign with the Wizards, because they can offer five year 246 million. But what if the Wizards still feel burned about when they gave that to John Wall? And what if Bradley Beal says, never mind, I want to win over getting paid? Number two, Zach Levine. He is 27 years old and gets better every season. 
My one knock on Zach is playoff experience. He has none. That makes me nervous for a team trying to win a chip, but I think Zach can do it. I mean, just look at Anthony Davis when he got traded to the Lakers in 2019. The furthest he got with the Pelicans was the second round he was embarrassed. He gets to the Lakers and in year one wins a chip in the bubble. Zach is an all-star offensively, improving on defense, and he's not a huge headache in the locker room. Like number three, James Harden. His nickname is Small Game James because he's elite when it doesn't matter. How is one of the best offensive players ever below Zach Levine? Because he melts down in the playoffs. The only thing that matters is the playoffs. Harden's track record is horrible. Unless he somehow wins it all with Philly this year, I do not respect his heart. But if that happens, he'll resign in Philly anyway. Number four, DeAndre Ayton. It is super rare to see a 23-year-old, talented number one pick, be a potential free agent. Well, that's what happens when the Suns owner gets super cheap and doesn't give Ayton the max. Now, if Phoenix loses, they don't offer him the max, and then Ayton leaves somewhere else. Since his rookie season, he has become a lot more efficient, but the box score doesn't show defense. The Mavericks need to push hard for Ayton, and that would mean a max contract. Number five, Kyrie Irving. He has been amazing recently, yes, but I can't put Kyrie higher than number five for two reasons. Number one is health. He has been injured always, especially in the playoffs. And number two, we all know, is the locker room. Does Kyrie really love basketball? Ever since he left the Cavs, I can't say for sure. Yeah, he does. And by the way, Kai, at number five, is the only free agent here who's a proven playoff winner as a number two. But since then, he has wrecked every locker room he's been to, from the Celtics to the Nets. Obviously, he's a talent, but pay at your own risk. Number six, Miles Bridges. Remember how Miles Bridges was getting like six man of the year buzz early on? Yeah, he's still really good. People, I guess, just were tired of talking about him. In the last month, he has put up five games of 26 or more points. Now, the defense, not great, but at least he's got the tools. Number seven, Jalen Brunson. Jalen is your typical underrated guy because he just doesn't look like an elite NBA player. He's like six inches shorter than everyone else. He's not super ripped, but he's consistently one of the best players on the court. Real Kyle Lowry vibes. The Mavericks might bring him back. Who knows if they want to pay that much, but compared to some of the other guys lower down on this list that you're about to see, you don't get a lot better for the money than Jalen Brunson. Number eight, Anthony Simons. Ant is below Brunson because you're going to have to pay Ant a lot much more but is he actually better i'm not actually sure but in the end portland is probably going to keep him anyway number nine colin sexton we all thought sexton was going to get paid then he got injured for the entire year and the Cavs took off without him so do they actually need to like break the bank for Colin Sexton? He is a restricted free agent, so Cleveland can match any free agent offer that he gets. But if a team like, I don't know, the Pacers want a young point guard, maybe he's gone. Number 10, Yusuf Nurkic. Nurk is a total badass with playoff chops when he wants to be, but he's not great defensively and he can kind of be a downer in the locker room. I still think that a team like the Lakers who need a center would be a great fit. Speaking of the Lakers, things just keep getting worse and worse. I know that LeBron dropped the 50 piece over the weekend, but it's clear all he really cares about are the points right now because he's chasing Kareem. He knows that the season's not gonna end well. And they don't even have their own first round pick in the draft. So the only thing they can do is improve in free agency, but maybe they can improve with a trade. And I make the case that they should trade LeBron James. And I think maybe even he wants a trade off the Lakers. Check the video out right here.